So how did Spongio start? Um, so these are people from the Mikva Challenge. This is a summer program for for teenagers, they're all high schoolers, and they broke up into a bunch of different councils, and each of the councils kind of worked on a, a separate type of civic, civic topic. So there was like a health council, and this particular council is the Juvenile Justice Council. So the interesting about the thing about this app is that I knew like nothing about juvenile justice or, or expungement um, before before working on this app. I didn't exactly have have an upbringing where I knew people who got arrested. Um, but these these people from the Juvenile Justice Council, they spent the entire summer researching juvenile justice issues, and they were the ones who realized, like, oh my god, expungement is really important. We should have a tool that helps people expunge their records. And so they decided that it would be great if it was some sort of web app so that because that's how that's how the youngins are are accessing information nowadays. Um, so yeah, they're the ones that came up with this idea, and it's it's kind of cool because Chris Rudd, who headed this council, he kind of just like tweeted at me one day and was like, "Oh, I have an app idea. Do you want to work on it?" And I was like, "Oh, okay." So this project happened very organically. Um, and then taking things from idea to execution. This is how it happened. It's, it's pretty cool because it was a partnership between very, very different organizations. So on, on one end, there's the Mikva Challenge and the kids who came up with this idea. And then we also worked with Smart Chicago, who was really helpful in just like clearing hurdles. <laughs> and then the Legal Aid Foundation, I worked very closely with a pro bono attorney there, Charlene Grace. And she was very helpful in like clarifying all the legal legal language and information. So after I made a first prototype of this app, we we went through design thinking exercises. And I love design thinking. It's basically a, a process where you go through and you brainstorm like everything in the world. And you think really, really broadly. So we had a lot of prompts that were like, how might we? And then all of the all the teens from the Juvenile Justice Council, they wrote down all their ideas on sticky notes and we collected all of them. And then the next stage of design thinking is kind of going through all the possibilities and refining. And I learned that design thinking is really awesome when you have lots and lots of people. Um, because creativity really comes from having like a lot of diverse perspectives. And the team definitely came up with like really, really great ideas when we had pretty specific prompts. For example, um, when I first made the app on the page where you where it says like, oh, you're not eligible, sorry. That's all I had on the page. And one of the teams noticed like, wait, that's kind of sad. <laughs> why can't we why can't we make it more friendly and provide resources for even people who aren't eligible for expungement. So it's, it's that kind of thing that I would never even think of that really comes out of design thinking. And then um, we also work a lot with the Legal Aid Foundation. I spent a lot of time going, going back and forth and all sorts of emails. I'd say this was the bulk of the work in, in designing this app was just translating all of this legal information into like a flowchart that I could then transform into like a question tree in the app. Um, so yeah, this is very complicated. And actually, even now, even after having worked on this for like two months, there are still some things about, about expungement law that confuse me a lot. And then Smart Chicago. Um, so Smart Chicago, Dan wanted to get involved, and he said that the goal of Smart Chicago was to be as helpful as possible while doing as little as possible, which is actually a very cool philosophy. And I think we're very lucky <laughs> to have to have an organization like this in Chicago. So an example of the kinds of hurdles that Smart Chicago helped us get through. Um, there is a lot involved in building an app outside of just coding stuff. And this is something that if you're not like familiar with coding, you might not be familiar with. But there are things 
Like, you have to figure out how to host your app or, like, what domain name to buy and things like that. So Smart Chicago kindly hosted this app on their Heroku account. And also, also um, Mikva was originally going to pay for the donate domain name. And there was actually one point in January where the app was like all done, all set, everything, and we were just like waiting for approval from Mikva to like spend 50 bucks to buy this domain name. But they have to go through like an approval process. And then one day Dan was like, oh, whatever, we just bought it for you. So it's, it's that, kind of, that kind of thing that's extremely, extremely helpful for, for getting apps off the ground. So pray for Smart Chicago. Oh, and also Smart Chicago thinks of things that I would never think of, like a privacy policy, which they're working on now. That's cool. Um, so yeah, the results of Expectio. So, so far, we launched in January, I think is a little bit after January. Um, so far, we've got 120 people who have <laughs> submitted a form, which is pretty cool. Because last year, I think for the entire year last year, LIF helped out about 195 people. So this is this is increasing their traffic and, and keeping their pro bono lawyers more more busy. Um, but our next steps, it's out, outreach is definitely the most important because the 120 we're not really comparing it to how many people LAF helped last year. Because we're not really going for like incremental improvements over, over their numbers, because the numbers are still really, really small. What we're really comparing to is like that 25,000. Um, the 25,000 people a year who are arrested. So right now, it's, it's still a very small portion of that. And so if you know community organizations that would be interested in Expandio, you should come talk to me so that we can get the word out. And then we're also translating it to Spanish, um, which Renee here is actually working on, and that's super cool. And the awesome thing about open source is that people in other states have actually expressed interest in bringing Spongeo to, to adapt to their own laws in other states, which is pretty sweet, because it would be fairly simple to adapt since it's like such a lightweight app, and it's just a bunch of static pages. And also, what's really interesting is this week, somebody from an LGBT advocacy group emailed me and was interested in adapting Expungio, not to expungement, but to LGBT issues. So they wanted to create an app where it would ask you questions and it would help students figure out if they've been discriminated against in dis disciplinary measures. So unfortunately, I don't have time to work on this, but if somebody is interested in taking on this project, come talk to me because they're looking for a developer. And then 